So today we are going to install Protena once again by Docker Compose. While I will explain how Docker networks work and what are the advantages of Docker Compose. Let's start. So currently we are here in our server terminal. But I want to show you that we can really check that currently our Portainer instance is really running. We can refresh it and we see, okay, it's still running. So to create a new one, okay, we could also create another one, but we don't want two of them. For what? We need to stop this. So we say docker stop Portainer because it's the name of the container. And we also need to remove it. So we say docker rm or whatever Portainer. Now the container is also removed. Now we need to create our compose file. And now that we have the Samba share that we created in the video before, we can do this very easily in our Windows share and on our PC. So we can say new folder and we can call it compose. I click into it and say I also want a new file, text document called portainer.yaml. And we press it. And I open it right now. But it's blank. We need to fill it out ourselves. You always start in a docker compose file with the version. We can call it version, for example, it's the most of common one is free. There are also 3.7. There are some syntax differences between the versions, but with free, you won't do something wrong. Then we can, or we have to create our own network that I will call just Sasha for right now. And now the important part is our services, because now that's the part where we define our Portainer instance. We call it Portainer and need to give it the image. Don't forget about the indent. The indent is very, very important. You need the tab here right now. And also you need the tab here. That's very important for YAML files. And we need to say Portainer, Portainer CE, and we use the latest version and also give it a nice container name. Otherwise it has a range name as we have seen for a randomly created hello world container, for example, we can also say restart always. It's the same that we had as Docker run with a command, but we now define it as compose. Then we need our ports. We have multiple ones, but this time I use 9,000 and not 9,433 for the HTTPS one. We use the legacy one. If it will ever be canceled, don't worry. You can still change it without any problems to 9,443. You can also just Set, change this one because this one will be the internal container binding and this one will be the one on your on your external IP of the Ubuntu VM. It means if I would have it like this right now, I could still call it by 9000 in the browser, but this command would go to 9443 in the container. So I would need HTTPS as well, but we want to have 9000 for HTTPS. And we also need 8,000. And now, oops, Allah, we also need volumes because we want to persist our data or better said, we already have persisted this and we want to access our already existing database. So we need var run docker stock and again var run docker stock to have the access on the docker instance. And now we also need to have our Portainer instance. So we define it as data here, which is exposed of the Portainer container. And the last step is to define the network we just created and say it's also Sasha, like it is here saying, and we can just save it. So now we need to go back into our terminal. And from here, we can just start the Docker Compose file. So we type Docker Compose, then F for file. And we need to give the whole path then. We, don't, we wouldn't need this right now because we are already in this area. We could write it else, but we do this like this right now. And we say portainer.yaml. I will always say punkt, sorry, I'm German. And we need to say up to get it up and D for detached. So don't we don't have the logs here right now and need to interrupt it or something. It just starts it. And if we press enter, we can see permission was denied because of course we need to do sudo before this. So I go to position one and say sudo and now it will work and it is instantly created because we already have the image installed or downloaded better said. And now the network composer was created and the portainer container is started. So this one here won't work anymore because it has this URL 
But if we do the same now for, give me a second, 33, 9000, we have our Potena instance where we can log in now. And I can just click in to this and say my password is like this. And we are into game. And we can see already everything. There's our container. We can see our stack compose here because stacks are already, uh, not already, are always called like this where the folder where we started them or where, where the compose file was stored. So, and we have it stored in the compose folder. If I would have it in a folder named Neymar, then it would be Neymar as stack, just to let you know. And if we have a look under networks, we can also see there's the stack compose and the network is also named compose Sasha by this. It has an own subnet for this, for this IP4 v4, uh, v4, v4, but that's problematic with this network here because we created a new network here and that is also according to the stack. So if you have multiple compose files, there will be a dependency between this network because Docker containers within one network can communicate with each other but they need to be in the same network for this. So for example, this one that we have seen here, the Compose Sasha one. And sometimes it's also like this, that you need to start one container before the other in some order of the Compose files to get it started, which makes maybe sense in a productive environment at some company or whatever. But in a self-hosted environment, we don't need this. We can have all in the same network so they can communicate with each other. You don't need to worry about it. And how do we do this? We open our terminal and just say docker network create with the name you want to have. I call it now Sasha. And we can see that it was created. But to change the network of our Portainer instance, container or network, whatever, we need to stop it again. So we can just use our command and change from up D to down. And it was set down and also the network was removed. If we now go back to inter our YAML we need to adjust our network. So we have to say, okay, we give this a name and say also Sasha, and we have to tell him it's external. That's the point because we created it externally. It is not managed by the Docker Compose YAML file, whatever. So we can just say it's external because we created it like this. And we can also say something different here because that's only a reference for within the compose file. If I say network Sasha Vocal and name Sasha, it will be Sasha for, Porte uh, not for Portainer, for Docker completely, but for the file, it will be Sasha Brockel. So I have to say here Sasha Brockel to just show you that it works. So we need to start the container again. You can just press here and see the container Portainer was started. No other network was created. And if we go back, you can already see we were locked out. That's annoying. But of course we were locked out and we can log in. So everything works and we can see under networks, we have our network called Sasha here with the same, with not the same, but an own IPv4 subnet and with Portainer as container in it. And everything worked fine. And if we would create now another container with the same network, they could communicate with each other without any problems. And you don't need to worry. You can just always say, okay, you know what? I'm using this network here. I can copy the first path because it's the external one. I just attach it and I'm good. That's the reason why Docker Compose is way more easier than handle it with the Docker Run uh, command. Of course, you can save them also in your list somewhere, but it's also easier to read with these YAML files here. So I hope you understood why Docker Compose is the better variant to choose over Docker Run commands, even though you can do whatever you want. You can also start containers by Portainer. I mean, if you are just trying something, go for it. But if you are using something for your home environment, like in productive, don't do this. So you now learned how to create Docker Compose files, how to use them, how to start them, what are Docker networks. And in the next step, in the next video, we are going to have a look how to set up our own domain with a proxy manager and handle multiple incoming requests. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see us in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.